Hi, I'm Arden Kawin, and welcome to the Pro Singer Success Collective. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the number one saboteur of breath support. So this is like the Everest for every singer, good, reliable breath support. And when you understand the things that you need to do to be the most stable, consistent, and reliable in your support, 99.9% .9 of all the other issues that you experience with your voice and performance get taken care of. They go away. And I'm not joking, like the support is the thing because it is literally the thing, it is the foundation that literally supports everything else that you want to do with your voice and your songs and your performances. So today we're talking about the number one thing that tends to sabotage good breath support or any breath support in some of your cases. So before we move any further, I want you to do a little check-in and I want you to hit me in the comments or in the chat if this is you. Do you experience tension, neck tension, jaw tension, tongue tension? Is that you? Do you experience strain, especially as you're going up into the higher registers of your voice? Does it feel like you are just trying to push a boulder through a ceiling? Okay, strain, do you experience strain? Do you experience the, the, you know, the frustration of not being able to make it to the end of the phrase. So either it cuts out or you're just worried that you're not going to make it to the end of the phrase, or you realize that you're breathing like every third word because you don't have the support to be able to make it through the end of a long phrase. Is that you? Does that happen? Here's another one. Do you have trouble transitioning registers? going from head voice to chest voice, going from chest voice to head voice, or men going to head voice or going into falsetto. Do you really struggle with that? Does it give you anxiety or do you just not do it? Like you just stay in one register and you just are like, I don't sing, I don't sing in my head voice. Is that you? Trouble transitioning registers. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's something else. Do you experience stamina issues? Meaning your breath tends to get tight and worse the longer you go in the song. Like you're good for the first verse, first chorus maybe, but the longer you go, the, the worse it gets, the more tight, the more strained, and the less reliable your breath becomes. So all of these things, oh, one more, I totally forgot, pitch issues. Are you always feeling like you're slightly under pitch or are people telling you you're flat, like you're not right in the center of the pitch, or maybe you're, you're a little sharp, like you're not right reliably in the center of the pitch, that's another one. So all of these issues, these can all be solved by reliable, efficient, consistent breath support. And I know a lot of you watching this, you've studied a lot. You've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with experts. Some of you have degrees in vocal performance or musical theater. You've studied a lot of singing. You've had a lot of voice lessons in your day. You've had a lot of technique. And a lot of you probably know what you're supposed to be doing with your support. And you have all this training, and yet, when it gets into you know, the audition or the performance, when it counts, when you need to deliver, even though intellectually you know what your body's supposed to be doing to support the sound, you're in that moment, your body's like, nope, can't do it, not gonna do it. Like your body just literally goes back into all its old habits that cause you to experience the strain, the tension, the not making it to the end of the phrase, the stamina issues, the pitch issues. And this is so ultimately frustrating because at the end of the day, your body actually does know how to support resonant sound. We were all built for this. We were born with it as mother nature's most effective mechanism for producing resonant sound. If you think about it, a baby can cry and cry and cry at the top of their lungs, never get hoarse, never get tired, do it for hours on end, and it is the most present resonant sound. Why? Because they were built with that mechanism, as were you, as was every other person out there. We were all built knowing how to support and sustain resonant sound. 
So why is it that when you go in for your audition or you go into sing in front of an audience or even in your own practice, why is it that that efficient mechanism that you were born with doesn't show up? So now we're getting a little closer to understanding what the number one saboteur is. Because if you were built to do this, if your body was built to do this, then why doesn't it show up when you need it to? And here's what I want to tell you. The number one saboteur of good breath support, reliable, consistent breath support, is your thinking. Your thinking is what is interfering and sabotaging with your body's most effective design and production for making sound. So let me explain to you how this works, okay? As humans, we are all people who physicalize our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings. It's just normal. It's what we do as humans. We internalize and we embody what we're thinking and what we're feeling. So if you see a spider and you're scared of spiders, you're gonna think, oh shoot, there's a spider. And your body physically reacts to the thought that you just had. In the same way, if I am on a beach in Maui with a Mai Tai in my hand, listening to the beautiful waves, and I'm just thinking, this is the life. My body, is gonna to react to that thought and it's just gonna chill the, the freak out, right? Now, if I'm on a beach in Maui and I'm chilled out, but what's going on in my head is, oh my God, I forgot about that deadline and I don't know if I'm gonna get that part and did the thing that I sent in, is that audition, is that really gonna work? Did I do it well? And oh my God, I forgot to pay my rent. And if that's what's going on in your thinking, you think your body's gonna be all like, Ah, like chill and live in your best life in Maui? No, you'll be in Maui, but your body is going to be all here because of what thoughts are going on in your head. So in, in a very simple, rudimentary sense, your physical body is always reacting to the thoughts that are in your mind and the emotions that you feel because of it. And so for somebody whose body is their instrument, and so if you follow my content, you know I say this all the time, this is not your instrument. Your whole body is your instrument, okay? And the entire body is involved in what happens in the result of the sound that you make. So if you are someone who is just sitting at you know her day job, data processing or doing whatever you would do, like sitting, doing an accounting or whatever, like taking on the physicality of your thoughts and your emotions, it's not going to prevent you from like logging your data. You know, you might be stressed out. It might not be good for your overall health, but it's not going to prevent you from doing your job. But for someone whose body is her instrument, like a singer, like an actress, right? Physicalizing those thoughts and emotions is going to have a dramatic effect on your body's ability to show up for you to do its job. So you, you see where I'm going with this, which is if you are thinking things that are causing your body to react in certain ways that sabotage your breath support, then you got a big problem because it doesn't matter whether you actually intellectually know what you're supposed to be doing for efficient support if your thinking is sabotaging it because your body is just reacting to what's going on in your mind. And so at a very you know basic level, like let's take the spider. The spider shows up, if you're somebody who's scared of spiders, now that emotion of fear gets taken into your body. And what does fear look like in your, in your body? It's the same in all humans and it has been since the beginning of time. It's fight or flight. That's, that's how we all physicalize fear, okay? And so if you have a physical reaction to that fear that now causes your body to either fight, which means make, force, do, push, crawl, control, tense, right? You're gonna fight that spider or whatever it may be that you're scared of, right? Like the bear is in the cave and the caveman gets scared. The, the caveman's either gonna brace himself to fight the bear or the caveman's gonna run away. It's fight or flight, 
okay? So if you're in your physical fear reaction, if your fear reaction is to fight, right, that's what your body's going to do. It's going to brace itself. It's going to contract. It's going to get ready, right? Same thing. If your physical fear reaction is to flee, then your body's going to, like, let go and it's going to run away. So when you are having issues with breath support, if you are thinking thoughts that are going to put you in fight or flight, let's say uh, out of fear, or if you are having thoughts that cause anxiety, which are going to make you shut down, or if you are having thoughts that are going to make you go into um, shame or uh, any of these negative emotions, right? They get taken into the body and now they prevent you from using what mother nature gave you to make mother nature's most effective resonant sound. So I want you guys to start examining your thinking around your singing. What are my habits? What are my habitual thoughts? Am I somebody who, you know, when I go in to sing a song, I, I have to get it right. I have something to prove. You know, maybe mom and dad said like, being a singer, that's not a real career. And so maybe now you have something to prove. Well, that's a, some serious thinking going on that's going to cause you to show up to your voice ready to fight. And so I could give you the best technique in the world around your breath support, and it is not going to matter if your thinking is sabotaging you from using it. Because all of that stuff that would hook you in and keep you nice and consistent and reliable is going to go out the window and it's going to be replaced by fight, which is contract, push, force, do, manipulate, control. And if that's how you're using your body, now you're getting into strain. You're getting into tension. You're getting into pitch issues because you're pushing. You're getting into stamina issues because you're pushing. And the body is not built to maintain making sound for long periods of time with an inefficient mechanism. So that's one example of how, you know, a thought like, I got to prove my parents wrong, is affecting you from actually embodying doing the thing that's going to allow you to prove your parents wrong. And by the way, guys, this stuff is not conscious most of the time. It's all operating underneath the surface, right? I had another singer I worked with for a really long time, years ago, who um, was the last of like nine kids. She had a huge family and she was the youngest of like eight or nine children. And her family was very chaotic and there was a lot of, uh, you know, stuff going on and lots of voices, lots of, you know, people telling everybody what to do. And so what she quickly learned in her family is the way that you get along in this family is by not being heard, by not speaking your truth, by locking it up, by not being fully seen, not being fully heard. And just kind of people pleasing and molding herself to what everybody else needed. That was the way that she was able to get along in her family. So this is a habit, a way of thinking, a way of managing her emotions and her emotional state that in her family of origin created safety for her in that environment. But now she takes those habits and that thinking into her singing. And now it's not safe anymore. It's not safe to be heard. It's not safe to put your truth out there. It's not safe to open yourself up and be vulnerable in performance because that was what she was taught. And so now that thought pattern, that thinking, her body is reacting to that and her body feels fundamentally unsafe. So she flees, metaphorically speaking. And she stops trusting the technique that she knows. She stops trusting the ways that she knows she could use her body to show up for her because it's not safe being seen and heard. And if she trusts that, she's going to be seen and heard. So fundamentally, now the thinking is interfering with her body showing up for her because the messages she's getting from her brain are sabotaging her body from being able to do what she needs to do to have a successful performance and to support her sound. So she, she doesn't. And she lets go and she's not supported the way she needs to be. And then she's actually made the sound that she was terrified of making in the first place, which is that pitchy sound, the tense sound, the, the trouble transitioning from registers just has to do with changing support when you don't need to be. Okay. So these are just two tiny examples of all the very, very, very many ways in which I see singers thinking, interfering with their body's ability to support their sound efficiently. And it's frustrating. 
It's so frustrating because it has nothing to do with talent. It has nothing to do with your God-given sound and your gift that you've been given and everything to do with the fact that you're continually getting in your own way and you don't realize it. And so the number one saboteur of good, efficient, reliable breast support is stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. All these thoughts, all these habits, all these patterns and blocks and ways in which you don't even realize how they're interfering with you being able to show up and trust your body instead of sabotage it and make the sound that's gonna get you on the bench instead of on that stage. And it's not so easy to just say, well, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna all of a sudden like stop my stinking thinking. You know, I'm gonna all of a sudden become super aware of what I'm thinking in any given moment and, and it's gonna help my breast support. Because most of the time, guys, you're you're too close to it. You're too close to these patterns, these blocks, these habits. It can be really difficult and take way too much time, if ever, to be able to figure this stuff out on your own. Right? This is why we need expert guides and mentors to be able to mirror back to us and take us through a process of like I do with my singers in my program, which is a process of uncover, discover, discard, of understanding all the ways in which we are using our minds inefficiently that sabotage the body from being able to make the most efficient, beautiful, powerful, impactful sound. So if you want to be able to come into more consistent breath support. If you want to be able to have more reliable support so that you know you can trust yourself to deliver when it counts, so that you're not stuck in tension and strain. That tension and strain, guys, it's just a reaction to inefficient support. But the thing is, you got to understand why that support's not showing up in the first place. What's going on up here? What are the thoughts and the habits and the patterns in your thinking? Old conditioned beliefs, old limiting beliefs, old stories that you're attaching to that don't serve you. This all affects your body from being able to use what it was naturally built to do in terms of making resonant sound and supporting resonant sound. This is why babies can cry and cry and cry at the top of their lungs for hours on end without getting hoarse or tired. And it is such a super pure resonant sound. It is because they do not have patterns and blocks and ways of thinking, limiting beliefs and things that prevent them from tapping into that most efficient production of sound. They are a clean slate. There's nothing getting in the way of that. But as we get older, we start adopting these conditioned patterns of thinking without being aware of it because it's, it was modeled for us by our parents. It was a reaction to the families that we grew up in, to the communities that we grew up in. It you know, could be patterns and beliefs and, and habituated ways of thinking that have come from society or religion or, or communities, right? So in, it is essential to understand these things so that we understand how to prevent the stinking thinking from interfering with the, the mother's nature's most effective production of sound that you were all given. So this is why it can be so hard for you to see your own habits, your own patterns, your own blocks when it comes to the stinking thinking. Because we are often so close to these things that we can't get that perspective to witness it. And so it's super essential that whoever that you work with in, in your training, be able to identify these things. And I gotta tell you, most voice teachers are not trained to understand this. They're just trained to get in there to teach you the nuts and bolts of the physiology and how to access it. But the problem is if you have things going on in your head that are preventing you from actually consistently accessing this, they don't know how to bring it out in you. And it's frustrating. I remember in my own training, I, I love to tell this story because so many of you relate this. Like in my own training, when I was in my early 20s, I had a ton of jaw tension that was really preventing me from 
getting the, the roles that I needed to get when I was in my opera career until I fixed this. I was, I was like stuck doing understudies and, you know, not getting where I wanted to go because the jaw tension, number one, didn't feel good. And so it made me fearful and scared of the notes that were coming because I knew I could feel it. And number two, it was preventing me from accessing my most free, powerful sound. And I would go into lessons with like a really amazing expert teacher, like $350 an hour back in 2002, like in New York City, right? And she was an expert and she had great tools and she would give me the tools and then she would say to me, but Arden, you have so much tension in your jaw. And I'd be like, I know, I know, I feel it. Like, thanks, thanks, but no thanks. Like, what do you want me to do about it, you know? And she would be like, you know, go to acupuncture, go to yoga, uh, go to therapy, like all these things. And I would do all these things, but none of it, I mean, well, I shouldn't say, I should say I would do all these things and I would feel great. I'd feel totally relaxed and my jaw would be great. And then I would come back to singing. And the moment I would come back to singing, all the tension and all the BS was right back where it started because nobody was connecting the dots for me and connecting how all of those limiting beliefs and old ideas about myself, old insecurities, um, traumas, um, old conditioned thinking, old stories I connected to that, that weren't serving me anymore, how all that stuff, nobody was showing me how all that was showing up in the moment of singing and how it was all attached to my thinking around my success or my failure in this career, how bad I wanted it, how much I felt I had to prove. Nobody was showing me how all that stuff was showing up in my thinking and in my body in the moment of singing. So it took me a decade plus of all kinds of uh, mindful practice and all these other modalities and connecting the dots on my own to be able to understand how this all works. So I don't want you guys to have to spend 10 years plus figuring all this stuff out because that's time you don't have. You guys need to get on this now because every day, every minute that you spend stuck in, in inefficiency, inefficient support, insecurity, lack of consistency, not being able to deliver when it counts, every day that you spend in that is a day that you are not living to your potential is a day that you have to sit with the fact that you are failing at the thing that you love the most. Every day that you don't know how to connect those dots so that your voice shows up is a day that you are not making money doing what you love. And so you are stuck at a day job that is sucking the life out of you and making you feel like a failure because you have this gift and you're not living it. And I don't want that for you. You do not have 10 more years of that torture in you. This is why talented singers quit. So the number one saboteur of breath support is also the number one saboteur of careers because if you don't have that support under you, you are not singing your best and you are not getting hired. Your records are not getting listened to and you are not making that impact on the audience that brings those sustainable careers. So this is no joke, guys. Like I'm, I'm all on my, my, my soapbox right now. Because there are too many of you that are too talented out there who have spent too much time and money and energy and effort trying to get this career going only to be benched or just not living it at the level that you want because you don't know this. When we change the thinking, we change the singing. Your body is just reacting to what your mind is telling it at all times. So if you want more consistent breath support, if you want to be able to deliver when it counts because you trust your body and you have that unshakable confidence in knowing that your support and your voice is going to show up for you, if you want that so that you can go out and create a massive career and live a big life out of your gifts, then do not waste a minute. I want you to book a call with me. And on this call, we're going to get on the phone for about 45 minutes to an hour. And we're going to talk about all the things you're experiencing. We're going to get really clear on what these big issues are. Is it strain? Is it tension? Is, do you feel like you don't know what you're doing with your support? And how is this affecting you? Are you going on auditions? And are you not getting in the callbacks? Are you not even getting auditions? You're submitting and they're like not even allowing you into the room. 
They're watching that self tape and they're like, no, like we're not even giving you a chance to come into the room. Are you spending time and effort and energy and money making recordings that do not get listened to? You have like, I don't know, 800 plays on Spotify. And that recording that you poured your heart and soul into is languishing without any mainstream attention. If that's you, we've got an issue. We've got impact issues. We've got issues of you being able to bring your full power of your voice. Like I say, anyone, anywhere, anytime, bring it. That requires an amount of trust and confidence and stability in your support. That's baseline. Without that, you can't feel comfortable opening yourself up vulnerably and vulnerably and feeling like you can connect with that audience on a visceral level because you're just stuck in your head in the fear of, oh, is it going to come out the way I want? Uh-oh, my breath is leaving me. Uh-oh, I'm not making it to the end of the phrase. All those uh-ohs, uh-oh, the high note is coming. There, that uh-oh thinking is stopping you from being able to take this talent out and turn it into a big career. So if that's you, book a call with me. We're going to get really clear on what the big issues are in your singing, what the gap is between where you are and where you want to go, and what we do to fix it. And I will share that strategic plan with you that I use with all of my singers who come in to work with me, and we'll see if it's a fit. So if it's a fit for us to work together, I'll show you what that looks like. And if it's not, that's okay too. This is going to be the most instructive hour that you have ever spent not singing, working on your singing. Because I want you guys to know that there is a whole nother level that you can train that's going to eliminate all these issues. And there's a whole nother way of understanding what's going on with your singing and your voice and understanding the consequences of not fixing it. So we're going to get really clear on what's going on, what the big issues are, and I'm going to show you step by step what we do to fix it. So there's one caveat here, which is that this call is not for everyone. If you have never had any one-on-one -on -one training or you haven't had very much one-on-one -on -one training, like you've done like five or six one-on-one -on -one lessons here and there over the course of time, if you've never really dedicated yourself to getting that baseline of training to understand what the physiology of the support really is, then you got to go get that first. Because without that baseline foundation of technique, there's a really good reason why you're experiencing strain. There's a good reason why you're having pitch issues and trouble transitioning registers and all these things. Because you just don't have the basics of support. It would be like you telling me, I want to get to the Super Bowl, but I've never actually done a football training camp before. Okay, so go get that one on one training first. It will help a lot of what you are experiencing. Now, however, if you have had that one on one training and you are out there hustling and you've been training for years, maybe you even have a, 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 an undergrad degree or a master's degree in music or musical theater or voice, and, and you've had all this training and you're just not seeing the results of all of that in the form of the reliable, trustworthy, confident voice that can deliver every time. If you are experiencing getting into the callbacks and never getting the part, or being stuck in the chorus and not getting those principal roles, or if you are stuck with records that just don't get any attention, call, make an appointment. We will figure out what's going on and we'll put together a plan for what you can do to fix it. I want you guys to know that there is another way. So make that commitment to yourself. That you're not just going to lie back and cross your fingers and hope it gets better because you guys, that is not a form of training that has ever worked. If you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. So no more of the, 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 the philosophy of cross your fingers and hope it gets better. You know where that leads because you're living in that frustration and anger and disappointment and defeat already now okay book a call with me we'll get you sorted and it will be an entirely new reality to open possibilities of what it can really be like to be able to sing with that reliability and consistency in your support so i really look forward to hearing from those of you who are ready to book a call uh the way you do it is if you're watching this on youtube there'll be a link on the screen at the end of the video if you're watching on facebook then there'll be a link in the comments to book a call do it today guys it's worth it because you are worth it 
Don't settle for second best anymore. And certainly don't settle for a life of wondering what if in your talent. All right, everybody. This has been the Pro Singer Success Collective, and I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into today's episode. If you wanna subscribe, click the link right over there that says subscribe. And if you wanna book a breakthrough session with me, which you absolutely should do, then click the link right over here that says book a call to schedule an appointment to speak with us. I'll see you on the next episode.